Hey guys, we we'll continue with the, the last subject belong to flexural uh, the design of beams, which is something called development link and cut off points. Development link, cut off points. Uh, we started last lecture by writing the formula, the ACI code formula for the development link of bars and tension or straight bars and tension. There is another formula for the development link of bars and tension terminate, terminated into a standard hook. There is another formula for the development link of bars and compression for splices for bars with uh, large end at the end or welded fabric. There is provision for everything. The most important thing is to understand what's the concept of development link. Why do we need development link? Or what is the development link? Which is also called the impediment link. It's basically how much you need to plant the bar within the concrete so that the friction between the concrete and the bar is enough for that bar to develop its FY. You want that bar to give you FY so that you calculate the flexural strength is AS FY D minus I over 2. So if you don't provide enough development length, that bar will not give you FY at the maximum moment location or at the wherever you want that number to be. And I explained to you how these results are conducted, basically for various bars diameter, for epoxy, non-epoxy, for lightweight or not lightweight, for top or bottom. All of these factors are considered. They just plant bars into blocks of concrete and they just pull them and see what's the length that allow for the bar or the strain in the bar to reach a foot to reach epsilon y. And they know that this is the development thing. Okay? <laughs> Let's rewrite the formula for bars and straight bars and tension. Straight bars and tension. What is the formula again? LD, required development length. Tell me guys. Yes? Fy over uh, lambda square root f prime c. Over square root or lambda? Mm -hmm. Square root of prime c. c. Then size of t, size of e, size of s, all over cb plus ktr over db. <coughs> all quantity times d. <coughs> Basically, this is a factor multiplied by the, di the diameter of the bar that you are developing or that you are calculating the development length for. A factor multiplied by dB. In no case, the development length should be less than 12 inch. In no case. So always, whatever number you get for LD must be greater or equal to 12 inch. In other words, this is the smallest number you can use as a development length. Good? Straight bars and tension. This is the formula. <coughs> lambda is what, guys? Always lambda in the ACI code most of the time is used for lightweight uh, effect. If the concrete is lightweight concrete. If the concrete is normal weight concrete, lambda is 1. If the concrete is lightweight concrete, sometimes the value like in the shear strength Lambda equal 0.85 if it's sand lightweight concrete. Lambda equal 0.75. Not for this one. Don't try. Not for this one. Talking about the shear. And lambda equal 0.75 if the concrete is all lightweight concrete. Here in this case, for calculating the development length, lambda is one if it's normal weight concrete. But what if it's lightweight concrete? 0.75. One number. Or there is another condition that you can calculate it if the specified splitting tensile strength is available. But most of the time, either 1 or 1.75. Okay? For the shear, the value is different, as I told you. And we covered it in the shear. F prime C is F prime C. Always when you have square root of F prime C in an ACI formula, it's in PSI. It's in PSI. When you use the metric system, we have it in megapascal in the formula. And everything else in Newton millimeter. Here, let's say PSI. Fy should be then in PSI, so you have to be careful. 60,000. 60,000 there. <coughs> Let me talk about this one. Psi t, top or bottom. 
if there is 12 inch of concrete cast below that bar being developed, psyche is 1.3. No, like it's a bottom bar or not, 12 inch below that bar, psyche is 1. Easy. So this is allocation factor. Where is the bar, top or bottom? Side E, epoxy or not epoxy? Epoxy or not epoxy? There is three categories. There is one of them is 1.5, all other epoxy, 1.3, none epoxy, one. The first one, when you have 1.5, it has a requirement for how much the cover over the bar, right? The cover over the bar. If you get that condition met, which is 1.5, and you have this one, 1.3, the product of those two cannot be more than 1.7. That's the only case you may have that, if this is 1.3 or this is 1.5. Most of the time, as I said, the bars, this is 1, and this is non-epoxy coated bars, is 1. As size, for number 6 and smaller, diameter 0.8. For number 7, seven and up, 1. And the code, this is the code requirement. But the code also encourages using one for all bar sizes. Good? CB is the cover to the center of the bar. KTR, it depends on the transverse reinforcement provided. It's complicated and usually you don't have enough information to calculate KTR. Even if you have enough information to calculate KTR, the code allows you to use this one to be zero. This one to be zero. And always go with this one zero. DB is the diameter of the bar. And CB plus KTR over DB, always, whatever number you, cal cal you calculate for this one, cannot be more than 2.5. Good? And DB is the diameter of the bar. So you have everything, all the information should be available for you in order to calculate the required development thing for straight bars and tension. For straight bars and tension. Okay? This is how much you need to develop the bar. Sometimes, if we don't, the beam, the physical shape of the beam, doesn't allow us to provide that enough development length. You don't have enough, like, you need the development length to be 70 inch, and all what's available for you is 50 inch. All what's available is 50 inch. So what you do, you go with the second one. First of all, sometimes you try to play with <coughs> F prime C. Because as you know, if you increase F prime C, if you increase F prime C, you decrease the development thing. What else? What else you, you may think of? If the required development thing, sometimes it's say required 60 inch, and what's available for you, let's say 50 inch. And you cannot change a frequency. What other things you may change, you may think of? You can say, I'm gonna calculate KTR, the actual KTR. I'm gonna try. What else? Look at it. What else? things. Obvious. What? Epoxy. The epoxy will increase. The epoxy will require more. Look. When you have epoxy, the friction of the steel with the concrete is smaller than when you don't have epoxy. It means you need longer bar to develop a fire. Look guys, what do you multiply this by what? Diameter of the bar. So the required diameter of the bar of number 9 is way more than number 8. So try to use lower bars. And instead of three number eight, it's say four number seven. In three, instead of four number nine, six number eight. So try to reduce the bar size. Not only that, there's another thing. See this size S for number six and below, this is 0.8. So you see? So sometimes you try to work it out, work it out before you go with the hook. Why? Because the hook is not just something, just hook it. It's money. For the guys to do you the standard hook, that's a lot of money. And not only that, when the bars are terminated into a standard hook, they need to be confined within that development thing. They need they require lateral confinement or transverse confinement. Okay, guys? So it's, it's not about a formula. It's good to understand what's in there. It's good. If you if someone is providing for you, this is lightweight concrete, tell him, why you need lightweight concrete? Can we go with normal concrete? So instead of having this 1.75, we have it 1. All of these options for you to make sure if you can work it out. Sometimes you cannot avoid it, especially when you have very small width where you can develop the bar. Then you have to terminate the bar into a standard form. 
if you have a bar terminated into a standard hook, usually we use three configurations for the hooks. The most famous things, 90 degree hook, like the straight bar will be 90 degree hook, or 180 hook, and sometimes 145. So this is the bar, if it's straight, if it doesn't work, this is 90 degree hook, or 180 hook, or sometimes 145. <laughs> this is the angle. 90 plus something. These are standard hooks. As a structural engineer, you don't have to design them. These are requirements. This turn here, the diameter of the tail, the diameter of this one, how much to extend after this one, the diameter here, how much to extend from here to here. The ACI provide this for you. When you under these hooks, the guys who will sell you the stirrups or the hook bars, make sure that they meet the ACI code requirement. And there's a figure in the book, and in the manual, explain how much each of them is supposed to be. Like the 90 degree hook, this one after D must be all greater than 12 dB, 12 times the diameter of the bar. So when you see a standard hook, it's a standard hook. 90 degree or 180 or 145, that's it. It's a standard hook. The requirements are specified for the guys who are supposed to fabricate the steel bars for you. Good? If you work with a company that fabricates steel and sells steel, we will have that figure available for you. And as a quality control engineer, sometimes you may need to go and check on these things. If you work for them. But usually this is a technician job. A technician job. It's not a design or an engineering, require an engineering calculation. Okay? <laughs> now, if you do a standard hook, the development length get much smaller. The required development length is much smaller than when the bars are in tension because the hook provides anchorage. If you try to pull the bar from the concrete, the hook will, it's like you are anchoring it there. It's so hard. So the bar will be at shorter length enough or able to develop its full capacity. See the concept? So now you can calculate LDH when you have this abbreviation LDH, it means straight bars terminated into hook. For the compression, you will have LDC compression. Equal what, guys? I don't even memorize these things. You have it, guys. You have the book? Okay. Not interested? Did I make it part of the exam so it get you interested? <laughs> FY, Psi E, Psi C, Psi R over 50, Lambda, square root of prime C, DB. Okay, guys? Psi E, of Y is of Y. Lambda is say, the normal weight or lightweight factor. Psi E, epoxy. But in this case, we have two factors. If it's epoxy or not epoxy. And the LDH. If it's epoxy, Psi E is 1.2. Non epoxy bar, one. It's easier than here. Here are three values 1.5, 1.2, or 1.3. And this one was it 1.3 or 1.2? Austin. Awesome. For the epoxy, 1.5 and 1. 1.3 and 1. And 1.5. 1.5. Yes. Here in this case, psi E for LDH is either 1.2 or 1. Psi C, cover. It's a cover factor. Okay, and says for number 11 or whatever, it's either 0.7 or 1. Look, if you have to be conservative sometime, you take it 1. You take it 1. However, if there is a special condition about the cover, how much the side cover and how much the cover over the bar being developed, if they meet special requirement, this reduces to 0.7. So sometimes you may say, you know what, I'm not going to check it, I'm going to take it one. Okay? Then you can create. If you have enough room to accommodate this one, good. If you don't, you try to calculate the actual values. These are reduction factors. Reduction factors. Okay? 
And psi r, what's psi r? Confinement reinforcement factor. It depends on the confinement. Are you providing confinement over LDH or non confinement? Usually, again, <coughs> it's hard to meet this condition. Usually, it's hard to meet this condition. This requires special confinement that's costly. You have to space the lateral confinement or transverse confinement over the development length. Very small spacing, like 3 dB. The spacing between, between those guys, 3 dB. So if you don't meet this one, 1. Psi r is 1. Hey guys, in other words, those conservatively can be taken 1. Unless you need something here. And psi e, it's obvious, box or only box, either 1.2 or 1. Okay? And lambda is the same as lambda we have. Lightweight concrete 175, non, non lightweight concrete is 1. <coughs> Easy. Now, the question is where, which one is you check? If this is your bar, if this is your bar, and you want your bar to provide FY here, and this length was not enough. So, what you did, you terminated this into a hook. So, which one you check with LDH? You check this plus that with LDH or just this one? Just this one. This is what you check with LDH. This segment here is to develop the hook that allowed us to decrease this one here. Now, someone will say, what are you talking about for? Look, guys, when you have an overhang beam, when you have an overhang beam, Loading. Do we have positive moment here? In this span, we have positive moment. In this span, negative. negative. So the reinforcement here is top, right? So the required speed is top. So the negative moment where? Is it at the support? Right? This is a max. So you want your bars here to give you FY here. Right? So you check, if they are to be straight, you check this link that's available for you, which is this span minus, let's say, 3 inch cover from here. Is it great, greater than LD? If yes, good. If not, you have to terminate this one into a standard hook. Now, when you check now, you check this. If it's this or equal at the edge, not both of them. Okay. This, let me give you another example for the footings. This is how we design the footings. What do you have on the footing? What's this here? That's a column. Okay. What's the the column? Let's say bring pure axial loading. That's axial loading. That's the footing on the level of the foundation. So what does it have? Reaction from where? From the bearing capacity of the soil, right? <coughs> when we design the footing, you know what we assume? We assume this location here is fixed. And fixed. So the footing is fixed at the base of the column. Now if you flip it upside down, this is like a cantilever. Second lever. This is how this one gonna bend. Up. You push down, this is bent up. So what is the tension? At the bottom. So the, the footing reinforcement is at the bottom. Now as I said, when we calculated the steel, we calculated based on the moment here. Right? So you want your bar to develop a fly where? Here. So you check from here to here. Do you have enough development link if they are straight? If not, hook. And that's why most of the time, this is how you see the steel of the footing. You won't have enough development link, so most of them, they are hooked. Likewise for the column. This is the steel coming from the column. Okay, you want the, the, the bar to give you a foil here. So you need to plant it in the foundation. If this is not enough here, you hook it. How does the hook help with compression? Of course. Now look, first of all, if you have a bar in the concrete, which is which one is easier? To pull it and get it out of the concrete or to apply combustion and get it out? Of course, tension. So that's why the development link in tension 
is much higher than the development link in compression. Okay. Now, if you hook it, if you hook it, it will be extremely difficult to get it out of the concrete, whether you are pulling or pushing. So the, the bars in compression, they require development things also. They require development things. Okay? In compression. And sometimes some bars in columns, the columns they have what guys? They may have axial and bending. It's called interaction. That's the last chapter. You may have bending coming. Right? You may have bending. If the load is eccentric or if it's a frame member, and frame member we know, we have axial, bending, and shear. So it's a frame member. <coughs> Let's take, so now, again, as I told you, the development thing is a number you can calcul calculate. Straight, hooked, or in compression. It's available also in the book. Okay. By the way, the bars for beams, the, bar, the compression bars, if they are not designed as doubly, who cares whether they give me a fly or not? I'm not relying, they are there for constructivity. But if you design them as doubly in your calculation, you wanted them to yield or something close to the yield. So you need to provide enough development length. But they are in compression. LDC. Okay? Straightforward. The formula for LDC is straightforward. Again, in the same chapter as this, the same chapter, which is chapter 6, I guess. Right? Can the development length have a control design? Some cases, some cases, let's say, you may need to not control the design, you may need to increase afferency, you may need to decrease the reinforcement. Okay? Rare situations, but we always make it work. We always make it work. That's why these things, as I told you, it's just find a way to do it. Find a way to do it. going to solve this problem for you because it's it will review also what we covered so far so that's a good review for the exam which is 610 which is 610 610 you have the following you have this beam These are the supports, both ends. The distance to the face of the support is 26 foot. The cross section is as follows. This is 22 inch. H is 19. And D is 16. Showing you the steel like that. And they are telling you those are the bottom one are three, number ten, and the top are two, number ten. I'm going to show you what's that. No, it's one row. That's why in the book you see he's showing you this distance here. Look, is it one row or two row? But how to show them? This is how we show the steel because they have two different lengths. <laughs> two different lengths. Three all the way, and two can be stopped. <laughs> two can be cut off. This is the concept of cut off points. Okay? 
and this is a clear cover, clear cover over this one of two inch. I'm going to read the statement. The beam shown in this figure is simply supported with a clear span of 26 foot and is to carry a distributed dead load of 1.05 dead load 1.05 kip per foot distributed including its own weight, so the self weight is included and a live load of 1.62 kip per foot and factor in series the reinforcement consists of 5 number 10 as shown at 16 inch effective depth means it's telling you D equals 16 two of which are to be discontinued where no longer needed so that's something you need to determine where we can terminate two of them <coughs> material strength are specified FY60 KSI, F1C5 KSI number 3 stirrups are used with a cover of 1.5 inch at a spacing less than ACI code maximum so the stirrups used number 3 stirrups the cover equal 1.5 inch the cover over stirrup the clear cover over stirrup is 3 inch so if I ask you in a minute, I'm going to ask you what's the cover to the center of the bar, just for you. We can calculate that. Calculate the point where two bars can be discontinued. Okay. Before I go there, I'm going to calculate something called development length. What's the required development length for these bars? And I'm going to show you in a minute why. First question, calculate the required development length for these bars. Are they bars N? By the way, everything is normal with concrete, non-epoxy coated, nothing is given. Is he saying anything after that for the development thing? Okay. Okay. So these bars if we want to calculate the required development length for these bars, why you need the required development length for these bars? Because to evaluate where you can calculate the cut of points, you need that. You need that number to compare, to check if this is good or not good. Okay? First of all, let's check some design consideration we covered so far for this one. Okay? What's the area of 5 number 10? AS 5 number 10. Six point thirty five inch square. This is for five number ten. Five number ten gives us this. What's rho by the way? Six point three five divided by B D. How much? Everybody get the calculator and do this. Everybody. Point zero one. 0.018 okay what's raw minimum for 5000 psi raw minimum i think is 0.0035 and what's raw max 0.0243 by the way what's raw 0.005 0.213 Point zero two one three, right? Our row is greater or equal row, row min, less or equal row max. Okay. Also, also, row is this or equal row point zero zero five. So what does that mean, Laura? That's it. That's someone ready for the exam. Anytime you use row less than or equal point zero zero row point zero zero five. Not the value. Rho for strain in steel equal 0 0.005. The V factor is 0 0.9. You don't have to check C over D or the strain. Right there, you know it. Okay, so this is if I tell you check if this section meets the ACI code requirement in terms of steel or the amount of steel provided. This is the check. Okay? 
Now, what's the flexural strength for this one, by the way? Before we go even there. By the way, how the question was, when we can cut two bars, right? The top layer here, at what location we can stop it? From the center line of the beam. The answer is, when, when, when three bars will be enough to carry the moment, right? Now, what's W ultimate here? W ultimate, guys. What? 1.2 times the dead load plus 1.6 times the live load. 3.85. And then I get 3.85 K per foot. And what's M ultimate now? <laughs> 3 3.85 times L square over 26 square over 8. 3.5. 3.5. 3. Is the depth, the effective depth, or 12 times the diameter of the bar. D or 12 dB. The larger of the two. D or 12 dB. As beyond the theoretical cut of one. Good? Question. Okay, let me just. One second before, let me just make sure we are following. Let me just, what's this distance here, guys? Thirteen minus six point nine three. Six point oh five. Six point oh five. Or seven point oh seven. Yeah, six point yeah. seven. Now, <coughs> look. Where you want those bars that you cut, those bars, to develop a fly? Here. Right? You want them to give you a fly here. Now you extend from this point, how much they extend? What's their length from this point? Which is 6.07 plus 16 inch, which is 16 inches, 1.33 foot. So the length. Their length this length is equal six point oh seven plus one point three three. What is the one point three three come from? The sixteen inch. So equal what? 7.4 7, right? 7.4 foot. Now, okay, that's good. So can we stop them here? Yes, for one condition. If this length is greater than LD. This length is greater than the required development length, good. If this thing is smaller than the development link, you have to put the development link. Theoretically, this is what you need. If this link is more than the development link, the bar will be able to give you a fly at the location you want. I will show you in a minute. I will explain it better than So now what you need to do, by the way, this is symmetric. What you need to do now, it's calculate what? LD, right? <clears throat> What's LD now? 3 over 40, right? FY over lambda F prime C, right guys? FY is what? 60,000 over, it's normal weight concrete, so lambda equal 1. I'm going to put the value of lambda, 1 for you to know. Square root F prime C is 5,000 PSI times, I'm going to put this, psi t, psi e, psi s over cb plus ktr, and we're going to have the values here in the formula, over db, everything is multiplied by db, good, right, so 3 over 40, fy over lambda square root of prime c, psi t, psi e, psi s, over this thing in here. 
Everybody finish this one and just look at me, please. Look at me. What side is one or one? Why one? Because it says if the bars have 12 inch of concrete below them, it's 1.3. Do we have 12 inch of concrete below them? Just two and a half. This is the this condition, the 12 inch of concrete below them is for the top bar, for the top bar. Not any top bar. The top bar when the depth is more than 12 inch. Good? So this is one. Psi E, is this epoxy coated steel? No. If it's epoxy coated steel, you have to tell us what type of epoxy or not what type of epoxy. What's the cover and this thing? But not epoxy, it's one. S, is this number six or below or number seven and up? It's number 10, which is one. See how easy, guys? One, one, one. And what's TV here? 10 over 8. An inch. Or you can get the exact number. This is the diameter. The diameter of the bar. It's number 10. So the diameter is 10 over 8. That's the diameter of one bar, right? Which is we are calculating for one bar. Oh, it's just for the drop length. Like or any of them. This okay. is this value. Look, for, this value for any of them. What if you have, look, what if you have like number 10 and number 8 in here and you are asked for number 8 for the bar you are developing. Uh -huh. The diameter of the bar you are developing. So that's 10, 8 or it's available in the, in the first table. What's the actual diameter? But this is good enough. Now, KTR, I'm going to take it, 0. DB is 10 over 8. What's left? CB. And what's CB? Read it again for me. Is the cover or half the spacing between them? The cover or the half the spacing between them? Let's see how much. What's the cover? <coughs> to calculate CB, what's the cover? CB equal. What's the clear cover given to us? 1.5 inch over stirrups. So that's 1.5. What's the diameter of the stirrup? Is it number three? So you add the full, look, you are calculating to the center of the bar, guys. So the clear cover here is 1.5. Then you have the stirrup, 3.8. Then you have half the bar diameter, plus 10 over 8 times, what's, what's this, by the way? What's the, uh, the diameter of number 10? 10 over 8. How much? 1.25. Over 2. Is it 1.25? That's 5 word. Yeah. Good. So what's that? Three almost three. And it's given to us by the way. We can can avoid that because he's giving us H19 and D equals 16, so it's almost 3. 2.5? Yeah. 2.5. By the way, here this is just for simplifying the calculation. If you want to design this one and you calculate CV equal 2.5, this one can be bumped to 16.5. Which is, by the way, when you increase D slightly, I pick this thing high because it's square. 16.5 square is a little bit significantly bigger than 16 square. Okay? So that's what you have. See, even sometimes, even if you calculate a value here, it's not even worth it. This would be more than 2.5, but there's a limit on this one. And DB here is 1.25. So let's, let's calculate that, guys. So equal 3 over 40 times 60,000 over square root of 5,000 times 1 times 1 times 1 over 2.5 over 1.25 times 1.25 and your LD is The required development thing for this bar, for this bar number 10, in this configuration, in this cover, 
Is how much? I got 39 points, so. Yep. 39.7? 39.8 if you want. Any? Thirty-nine. What did you say? Yeah. No, forty. Forty inch. Any higher numbers? Random. Get that. Don't forget. After you do all of this number, is multiplied by one point two five. This is a common mistake when I see the students they report that number. It's close to after you multiply it by LD because usually LD is one or. Something around one. Yes? Again, okay, it's a calculation. Well, how many feet, by the way? Divide by 12. 3.33 3, 3, 3 feet. Do we have enough? Yeah. Yes. So you say 7.4 is greater than LD. Good. Just for very clear, we took CB to be 2.5. Now, if we wanted, we could actually calculate the distance in between those bars and check it. Oh, yeah, we, we have to do it. We have to do that. Okay. We have to do that. CB is either this, the cover, or half the distance between those two. And if we want to do that, which is easy, okay. 22 minus the cover to the center is 2.5, right? right? So 22 minus 5, do it for me. 17. 17 divided by how many spacing we have? Half the center spacing, right? CB is half the center center spacing, right? Between the bars. So you said 17 divided by 4, how much? 4.25. 4.25 divided by 2? 2.125. Which one is bigger? Okay. 2.5. So CB guys, either the cover or half the spacing between the bar center to center. Half the spacing we calculated to be 2.125. And the cover to the center of the bar is 2.5, so 2.5 controlled. The rest of the two, and then, yep, and that's right. CB is either this or 22 minus 5 divided by 4 times 2. With half of that. Half of this space. Oh, okay, okay. So this is, you said, 2 points, 1, 2, 5? Yeah? <coughs> 2 point one two five inch and that's true this number here see guys we need to be the smaller because this if it's smaller it means the development link is more 2.125 and how much is that now that's 47 and the 47 is how many foot how much Almost 3.9. Almost 4. Foot. Again, guys, CB is the cover to the center of the bar or half the spacing between the bars. And half the spacing is the 22 minus 2.5 two from here and 2.5 two from here. That's 17. We have four spacings. So we divide the 17 by the 4, we got 2.125. And it's supposed to be, and we got 4 point something. Half of that is 2.125, smaller than 2.5, we use 2.5. So the answer is not 40, the 40 is when, if we use 2.5, not the right time. You need 47. Now, do we have 47? Of course. 7 is more than that. Okay? Hey guys, so let me show you what's happening. Let me show you what's happening. That's a what? For those two bars, guys, those two bars here. Okay? Those the two, the three bars going all the way. Three number ten. And those are the two bars. They are the same level. They are at the same level. Okay? Those the two. Number 10. This distance we said is how much? From the theoretical cut of points, from the demand, the strength demand, this is 7.4 foot. 
foot. Right? 7.4 foot. For this bar to develop FY, you need to develop it here, right? Look at this. Look at this. For this bar to develop FY, how much the stress here? What's the stress here on the bar here? Zero. What's the stress at the end of the bar? Zero. As this one is planted in the concrete, planted in the concrete, it will start developing F stresses, Fs. This will develop Fy at what length? Perfect. You understand? It will require four length, four foot impediment in the concrete to give you Fy. So the 7.4 will allow for that. See? That's the meaning. That's the meaning. Within four foot from its end, it will give you a one. That's it. Because we have 7.5, a piece of 7.4. Likewise from the other side. Is there anything else you need to check, Austin? The guys who know concrete. Is there anything else we need to check? There's one more check. I mean, here, here. About development link. One more check. This is not enough. Now, how many bars you lift in here? At this location? Three left, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The three are needed here, right? At the cutoff point here. At the theoretical cutoff point. Those bars must give you what? FY. Yeah. Those bars must give you FY here. So, so, what's the stress at the end of the bars in here? Zero. Is this enough, the distance from here to here? Is it enough to develop Fy in the bottom three bars or the remaining three bars here? Check what's this distance here, which is 6.93 from here. <coughs> is the 6.93 greater than 4? Yes. So those bars will develop Fy where needed. Not only here, those bars will develop a FY here, but we need them to develop a, to develop a FY where? Here. Don't they need to develop a FY at the end of the bar? By zero, zero. The moment there is zero. There is no moment here. Why no, 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 I don't mean the end of that bar. I mean the end of where the other bar stops. No, at the theoretical cutoff point. The theoretical. When you check the second bar, the remaining bar, you check from the end to the theoretical cutoff point. Okay, not to the end. Now, that extra thing, D or 12 dB, for safety consideration to avoid stress concentration. But when you check, you check from the end of the remaining bars to the theoretical cutoff points. Okay. Good? Good question. Okay, guys. Anything else? Anything else? Likewise, for the hop bar, you will have a cantilever, let's say, okay, or a footing like that, or an overhang. You just calculate LDH, check, do you have enough or not? That's it. What if it does have to? Either you say no, or if you, are, if you have to find solution, as I told you. <laughs> Increase of frequency, decrease the bar spacing. Okay? But don't use the hook. With the hook, the first oh, thing oh. you go, no, if you try, if you are close, you try without that. But you don't want to change the design, the flexural design, number bars, and all of that thing. If you are allowed to change the concrete strength, if you think the concrete strength is 4,000, I'm okay with 5,000. Do it. Or someone is giving you a concrete strength 3,000. That's a joke. There is no more 3,000 concrete. Okay. Any concrete you mix outside will give you at least 4,000. That wasn't the long time when you have the workers, they have no clue about concrete. They just keep spraying water on the concrete. They ruin the concrete. But now everybody knows there's Q QA, QC, quality control, quality uh, assurance practices. Not with their samples. You need a, you, you will take a cut of 10% out of the cost if your cylinders they don't pass the required strength. Okay? There was something in my mind I forget. Any question? Um, does it change anything if you um, for example you have to to cut the, the, in the, the bars in the middle or the external ones, which one do you have to like? Usually you want the one in each corner. Yeah, but you remind me of something. You always want a bar on each corner. 
By the way, the ACI code also require at least one third, one third of the bars to continue all the way to the support. At least one third of the bars to continue all the way to support. By the way, when you work in a company, all of this become like known to you. These details, guys, will be available for you. You will learn it by seeing it every day. So don't worry about memorizing. If you work in reinforced concrete, you will see everything. So again, the code will require at least one third of the bottom steel to go all the way. Good? Now, how much you insert those steel, those one third, within the support? That has zero moment. That's one of the questions in this question. How much you think we need to plant them within the support there? I mentioned this the other day. At least six inch. At least six inch. 15 centimeter, or at least six inch. So that's how much you go within the support. Okay? If you have a column, like at the end of the beam there is column, we know if it's simply supported, the moment is zero. But how much you go within the column, at least for one third of the bottom bars, six inches. Isn't that uh, requirement? I will calculate the, the government line for that. No, that's that's a different requirement. That's not what the, so this one, this one yeah. must go six inch for in the support. Besides, so I keep calculating the development line for that one, for the small, for the bottom bars. Yeah, that has nothing to do with. Oh yeah, now for like this one, when you check, yeah, good. When you check this one to see if this is good or not for the development name, you add 6.93 plus 0.5, uh -huh. plus 0.5, which is the half inch, uh, the six inch need to be go in there. Okay. Again, look. When you are short of something, you try to look for everything that make things work. Okay. Any question? Any question? And that's it for lecture design. Let me just say. So next time we will start with design of one-way slabs. And you will notice that one-way slabs is basically a, a very small or an easy beam. One-way slab is a beam with width equal one foot. And the good thing about it, the only thing you need to design is the thickness is calculated from an equation for the deflection. And the width is known, so V is one. The thickness is determined. The only thing you need to design is the main steel. Do you check serviceability? No. Do you check? The, do you need? Do you, do you design for stirrups? No. So an easy beam that you have to check deflection, that control. You don't have to design the shear stirrups. Just calculate the required steel. Okay. And that will also remind you or refresh what we covered with about beams.